Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, do I have to stand near the mic? <laughs> uh, thank you for inviting me uh, this morning to uh, talk to you all. Uh, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to come and talk to you about some of the opportunities through the Lancashire Enterprise Partnership to help with skills and employment. So there's three areas that I wanted to focus on today in the 10 minutes that we have. Um, inspiring Lancashire's young people to enter your industry and work for you recruiting Lancashire residents and meeting your business workforce needs, and also upskilling your staff, enabling them to achieve their potential within your business and contribute to productivity. So firstly, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I know Edwin uh, Boo, the chair of the Lancashire LEP, came to speak to you at the last event. Um, so you will be aware of the background in terms of the Lancashire Enterprise Partnership. Um, they're the, um, the ambitions of the LEP in terms of uh, targets and areas of focus, uh, which I'm sure Edwin touched on last time. Uh, my area of focus is around skills and employment, so skills for growth. So the Lancashire Skills and Employment Hub is part of the LEP and we support the work of the Skills and Employment Board. And it's about making sure that we've got the right flow of skills coming into the labour market to meet business needs and also thinking about inclusive growth across Lancashire. So how we're maximising the opportunities for young people and also for adults, unemployed adults, to access the new jobs that we're collectively creating. So in terms of how we work, we do have a strategic framework. So uh, about 18 months ago, uh, we developed an evidence base and a framework to help us identify the priorities in Lancashire. So where we needed to focus our energy so there's a, there's a raft of evidence that you can look at if you wish to on our, on our website. So we have, for example, seven sector skills studies where we talk to businesses about the types of skills that they would need in the future. And we looked at forecasts and so on to help inform where we may uh, put our efforts, but also to inform young people and adults about the potential job opportunities in Lancashire. Um, so we use that framework um, to help us look at how we align what we're doing with the needs of uh, businesses, how we invest uh, the funding that we have locally, so things like the European Social Funds, uh, Growth Deal Skills Capital, uh, which, um, as you mentioned, was invested into the Tech Hub here uh, last year, so contributing to that, um, and influencing the use of mainstream funding as well uh, with government, and most importantly as well, challenging energy of businesses, providers and partners of areas of priority. Um, so just to give you a quick run through some of those um, key issues that came out uh, when we did the evidence base and we looked at some of the evidence, um, I'll just pick three things out here. Um, one of the ones was around the ageing workforce in Lancashire and the reducing working age population. So when we were looking at um, the demand for jobs, it's going up, the working age population is going down and that's exaggerated by the ageing workforce. So we know, for example, with replacement demand, we're going to have a need to bring more people into the workforce. So just to give you one particular statistic, which I think kind of highlights the issue, uh, for manufacturing, which obviously is key in West Lancashire and Scalmersdale, across Lancashire we have a workforce of 73,000. Um, forecasts indicate that between 2012 and 2022, 21,000 of those are likely to be at retirement age. So it starts to show you the kind of replacement demand and growth, and when you factor those two together, the number of people that we're going to need to attract into the workforce, either locally through working with uh, you know, the schools, the colleges, the universities, or by attracting talent into Lancashire from elsewhere. Um, one of the other key issues was the careers advice and guidance, uh, which I'll talk about as well, in terms of it being very fragmented and young people not necessarily getting the insight into careers um, as they did previously. So their insight into the world of work is fairly fragmented um, and quite poor, particularly for young people who maybe lack social collateral through their parents, their friends, their family. Um, they don't necessarily get the insight to help them make informed choices about their future. Um, and also picking out around employer engagement with workforce planning. So we need to get more employers thinking about how they develop their staff and how they keep pace with technological change as well. That's our strategic framework. Um, so we, we were challenged by our private sector board members on the Skills and Employment Board to do it on a page. Um, so that's our summary page within the framework. You can read the full framework on the Skills and Employment Hub website or the LEP website. Um, but key in there, just linking to the themes that I mentioned at the beginning, 
It's around inspiring young people, um, enabling young people to get that insight into the world of work, to understand the fantastic job opportunities that exist in Lancashire and the businesses on their doorstep, and making sure that we're developing employability skills and thinking about how curriculum through school, college and university aligns to the needs of businesses. Um, skilled and productive workforce is around upskilling in the workplace, uh, workforce planning, apprenticeship growth, attracting in professional and graduate skills, leadership and management capacity and so on. Uh, the third is around inclusive workforce, so supporting the unemployed and inactive into work and getting any, everybody into that working age population and then taking an informed approach to what we do. So I want to focus on three areas in terms of what support can you access and how can you help us meet our objectives across Lancashire. So in terms of Inspire, um, this is about inspiring young people across Lancashire, particularly in Skelmersdale <coughs> and West Lancashire, to think about the job opportunities that are available to them. We've joined forces with an organisation called the Careers and Enterprise Company, who approached the LEPs across the country a couple of years ago, um, based off the back of a piece of research that was done by Lord Young, looking at the enterprise and employability of young people. Um, and their purpose is to try and increase the number of employer encounters that young people receive whilst they're in school and college to give them that insight into the world of work, but also to inspire them, to get them thinking about the future, to understand why they're doing their GCSEs, their qualifications and so on. Um, we started last year in Burnley and Blackburn with Darwin um, in January last year doing a pilot um, and we're now up to 67 schools across Lancashire and we'll be rolling out across West Lancashire and Skelmersdale in September. Now key to that are businesses. Um, so the model is that we have an enterprise coordinator working with a cluster of schools who's co-funded by the LEP and the Careers and Enterprise Company and then we work with strategic business leaders from the local business community who come into that school one day a month and work with the senior leadership team in that school to develop an employer engagement strategy and plan. And the plan is to make sure that we've got encounters from year seven all the way through to year 11. And we're building on that and giving insight into different sectors where we know there's going to be opportunities. Um, so we're, we're looking to the business community to work with us on that to match business leaders with the local schools to go in and develop that strategic approach. So we don't have kind of ad hoc visits, we have planned activity throughout the young person's um, um, journey through education. And there's some really powerful statistics behind that in terms of what impact that has on young people. Um, the research suggests that four to five good quality encounters with an employer can reduce a young person's propensity to be neat, that's not in education, employment or training, by up to 86% when they leave school. It's a really powerful increase earning potential by 18% <laughs> and also have an impact on their attainment levels as well. So some really powerful statistics there. But also for you, in terms of inspiring young people, it's giving them an insight into the world of work and they'll know about you, they'll know about your company and they'll want to come and work for you. So there's, a, there's an excellent opportunity there in terms of attracting future talent as well. And it also aligns with the West Lancashire Employment Charter as well, in terms of giving time to support the local community. Um, so now I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk about also what you can get in return through some of the European social <laughs> funded projects that we've currently got online. Um, so in terms of recruit, um, at the moment, we've got a project called Access to Employment. This launched uh, earlier in the year, in January. And the programme, which is funded through European Social Funds, uh, we've got 6.7 million, uh, running till July 2018, is there to support businesses to upskill adults to access their job vacancies. So we have a number of colleges and training providers and charities working across Lancashire in a consortium uh, led by Preston's College. Um, who are there to work with you to identify the skills that you need in your business uh, for vacancies, upskill people, develop their employability skills, develop their technical skills to meet the needs. Um, so there's an opportunity there to work with us to help fill your vacancies and to look at how you're recruiting staff. And then finally, uh, to mention upskill as well. So again, through European Social Funds, there's a programme in place at the moment which is helping you to develop the skills of your workforce. 
again through ESF, running till July 2018. We've got a consortium of colleges, training providers, led by Learn Direct, uh, working across the Lancashire County um, to support businesses to develop their people. Um, key to that is a training needs analysis, which will look across the business at all different functions and skills and departments, and look at how uh, the funding can help to subsidise some of the training uh, that could be available to your staff, but also give uh, access as well to apprenticeship tasters, uh, mentoring and supervision skills for, men uh, for, for mentors looking after apprenticeships as well. So there's a kind of generic aspect to it in terms of training and then also thinking about potential um, apprenticeships as well on how to integrate those into your <coughs> business. So it's really an opportunity to highlight those um, activities that are available to you. Um, I know uh, myself and, and Tracy, who's in the front row there, Tracy, do you want to stand up? We're doing a stand up thing today, aren't we? So, <laughs> that's Tracy. Um, so we'll be here at the end to have a chat if you want to have a conversation um, about um, any of the support that's available. Um, that's my email address and we're also on Twitter. So if you follow us on Twitter, we're also uh, giving regular updates on policy and projects as well and what support is available. Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> so much on time, we've got time for a couple of questions. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm afraid we're near the end, so uh, can kick things up to not um, do it too, too much. Oh, there's a question there, look. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've done a number of sector studies. So there's a number of sectors that we're looking at where we know there's uh, replacement demand and growth. So there's engineering, energy, creative and digital, visitor economy, health and social care, construction, finance and professionals. So we've kind of got that area. But I think if you were to unpick that, one of the key areas at the moment is digital skills and technology. And it's two ends of the continuum. It's one is around digital inclusion and having a level of digital skills to enable you to operate within a business, but then it's also the higher level skills in terms of digital technology. And so we know, I mean, that's one of the reasons we invested in the facility here, and we've invested elsewhere across Lancashire to try and fill <coughs> that gap around digital technology, you know, the software engineers and so on and so forth, where we know there's a significant skills gap at present. <coughs> 